Well, um, like I said, it's about 60 feet to the top of the, the, the water. So I get about 100 foot of water um, that this has to be laying down in there. Uh, put a little super glue on there because I just don't want to be losing this thing down in there. So anything I could do, anything I could think of to keep it from falling apart once it's down in there, um, that's, that's what I did. Now, it doesn't vibrate or anything like that, but, you know, pulling on it, if it gets stuck on the well pump or something that's down in there, uh, gets tangled up in that, you know, pipe or the, uh, the wiring for the pump, you know, you just want to make sure it's never going to come apart. So a little zip tie, do whatever you can, make sure that there's a little bit of play there and it's, it's not pulling directly on the wire. And that way I put a little extra loop in it just to make sure there's some play there. So whenever I pull on the wire ties with the rope, uh, it's not going to yank the wires off of their connections. So. Just whatever you can do to keep it, keep it together. Now I know some people will probably say, well, oh, plastic's no good for you. You know, the glue is no good for you. The vinyl tape is no good for you. You know, probably true. Um, but think about it this way. You know, everybody drinks out of plastic bottles, water bottles, soda bottles, things like that. You're getting plastic every day. This isn't going to hurt you. Uh, it's not hurting us. Uh, we've been doing it for weeks and weeks and, uh, you know, uh, nothing degrades that fast that I got to worry about it. Okay. Um, I've already had the other one in the well and pulled it out and the plastic wasn't the problem. The, uh, the, the steel was, the stainless steel was the problem, but, uh, you know, I don't, I don't think the plastic's going to be that big of a issue at this point. Now, down the road, there might be better ways to do this, but, uh, you know, for the time being, and if you need to disinfect water with this method, method because, uh, you know, uh, there's contamination or something like that, well, you know, you do what you got to do. But uh, I really don't think I'm going to have a big issue with uh, plastic causing me any grief. Uh, there's a lot more thing, terrible things that you eat every day or, you know, you go out to eat people cooking aluminum and things like this, everything comes out of a plastic container, even cooking oil or whatever, you know, it's all plastic and enameled and, you know, aluminum. So I uh, took a five gallon bucket out of the well, uh, pulled it out from the, the tub water here, you know, just straight from the spigot. I got a uh, heavy metals test kit and uh, decided to try it. And of course I tested before um, I actually ran the unit and uh, was checking to see if it had any heavy metals in it. And uh, I'm gonna do the test. I cut, cut this a little bit short, but uh, um, I had no problem with uh, heavy metals that I could see according to this. It's really hard to read and uh, of course it's even worse on my camera to try to show you but um, it's simple process checking for I think about 20 different uh, metals uh, chromium and nickel and copper and uh, uh, so on and so forth uh, uh, two valence molecules you know whatever but uh, you don't have to get into all of that, but it seems like I had no issue to begin with. And then, uh, you know, we'll run this in the uh, same five gallon bucket here. And I ran it for two hours. And that way, if there was any uh, leaching of any nickel or chromium or anything like this, it would be concentrated in that bucket. Now, you want to make sure that the um, plates are not touching each other, okay? They have to be floating, so there, there cannot be a connection between the two plates. And uh, this is just a, a simple setup that I used uh, for my testing 
and I had a uh, DC motor control and it produces DC voltage variable so I can set it for anything I want to now, right now uh, f at first I think uh, I start with uh, 24 volts here and, and uh, put it down in there but you can see the unit it's nice and clean okay and this is the way it's gonna stay you know it doesn't degrade or get dirty or rust or, or anything and I, I ran it in this bucket for two hours actually a little over two hours um, but I will show you different voltages and, and currents here now you can see down in there just immediately what looks like uh, some sort of milky looking okay it, that's microscopic bubbles of oxygen and hydrogen coming out of there okay so this is actually producing hydrogen and oxygen and they're actually pretty small bubbles coming up through there and they're, they're so small it actually looks like uh, milky colored now there I was running okay 55 to start with I dropped it down right away and uh, I wanted to run it at 12 and 24 volts so um, I end up dropping it dropping the voltage way down but you can see this thing just takes off and runs it's making a phenomenal amount of uh, hydrogen and oxygen so um, but no discoloration of the water you can see it's nice and clean and uh, no contaminants there it is there's a good picture of it frothing up um, some some bubbles and microscopic bubbles of course then there's some uh, larger bubbles there too when it collects you can see some of them popping up uh, but they're really um, the small ones I believe is what's really going to do the job um, so here we go I dropped it down to uh, about 24 volts and uh, ran it for a while I wanted to run it hot a little bit hot and uh, keep it at 24 volts in this bucket the whole time so that uh, I could actually get some uh, heavy metal readings if there was anything leaching out you can see the the bubbles already forming um, on the plates so yeah there goes that focus again lovely lovely uh, camera all right, check out the other videos.